My name is Louis Karitsky. I'm a family medicine physician affiliated with University of Florida as a clinical assistant professor emeritus. And I'd like to discuss with you at this point, the mechanism of action of the GLPs, essentially the how. The mechanism of action is indeed multimodal. And it's important that we understand these multiple modalities so we can take best advantage and harness the power of GLPs in glucose homeostasis. You'll notice they have effects in the central nervous system that can positively influence satiety and appetite. They may influence lipolysis and glucose uptake. They stimulate insulin. They affect gastric emptying. And they may even have some role in both cardiac protection and gluconeogenesis and steatosis. One of the mechanisms that is felt to be potentially cardioprotective of the GLP class is that GLP may be involved in reducing inflammation, improving left ventricular function, and reducing ischemic injury. All of these effects, including the effects on the vascular wall, are at this point putative and not defined, but there are interesting effects which may explain some of the cardiovascular benefits we see in this class of drug. I'd like to break down the four most important effects, at least as far as is definitively known by scientists, into what has been sometimes called the magic of GLPs. Number one is restoration of glucose-dependent glucagon secretion. Even though we typically think of type 2 diabetes as a dysfunction of beta cells, there is alpha cell dysfunction also. Remember that alpha cells are the primary source of glucagon. Normally, we only need glucagon when we are hypoglycemic. And when we eat a meal and have plenty of calories on board, glucagon should essentially disappear. For unknown reasons, reflecting alpha cell dysfunction in the fasting state in type 2 diabetes, glucagon levels are elevated. Disappointingly, after a meal, when glucagon levels should disappear, they actually rise in type 2 diabetics. But one of the very fundamental and beneficial effects, and almost unique to this class of medications, is the ability to blunt glucagon and restore appropriate or at least more appropriate glucagon levels. Number two, glucose-dependent insulin secretion. If we compare this, for instance, to sulfonylureas, a sulfonylurea will induce your beta cells to secrete insulin, whether your sugar is 4,000, 400, 40, or four. And obviously, we don't want more insulin secreted when the glucose level is 40 or four. We don't fear that with GLP agents because they do indeed stimulate insulin secretion, but only as long as the glucose is elevated. Hence, the rarity of hypoglycemia when GLP agents are used, unless, of course, they're used in concert with other agents which could induce hypoglycemia. Next, let's talk about the third of the four magic benefits of GLP, and that is a delay in gastric emptying. We know that in type 2 diabetes, there's a critical defect in what's called first phase insulin secretion. Preformed insulin is necessary so that when we ingest simple carbohydrates, especially, and the sugar rises rapidly, that preformed insulin is available to directly address that rapid rise in glucose and deposit the glucose appropriately in tissues. In diabetics, type 2 in particular, who lack first phase insulin secretion, the sugar continues to rise. Well, how could we combat that? If we were to use a low glycemic index diet and employ in the diet foods that are more slowly absorbed, surely that would tend to reduce that rapid rise of sugar in the blood. And another way is a delay in gastric emptying. That reduces the caloric load that's delivered to the intestine and subsequently delivered into the plasma. So that delay in gastric emptying is particularly beneficial when we talk about rises in postprandial glucose. And then finally, by a somewhat complex mechanism, which has been worked out to some degree, they improve satiety. 
This is probably an important issue since over 90% of type 2 diabetics wrestle with overweight or obesity. Additionally, the medicines such as insulin tend to stimulate appetite, making their struggle even worse. It's also important to know that since clinicians who begin GLPs notice that oftentimes a group of patients will experience nausea in the first few weeks of therapy, that the weight loss from the GLPs is not due to nausea. And of course, with modest weight loss, there's typically an improvement in lipid fractions and blood pressure, which ultimately can add up to a reduction in cardiovascular risk.